Hello, it's Deborah Richards from Madison's Residential, again, a managing partner and founder of my fabulous estate agency here on the Pantiles. I would say that, wouldn't I? Um, anyway, Claire and I were thinking about what to bring you as my next kind of um, interesting thing for you to listen about an estate agency. And she has put together a raft of questions. She's gone out to her friends and her audience um, for My Tunbridge Wells and uh, put together a list of questions. Now, I have hardly looked at these questions. I'm gonna give you quick, short fire answers without having thought about it very much at all. I did a quick skim to check that it was anything I've actually got to actually think about, but I'm just gonna do from the gut, from the heart, answers to these questions really quickly. Okay, so what advice would you give to someone wanting a career as an estate agent? Um, I think understand it's a really, really tough gig. It's a very hard job. Um, it's not just about going around beautiful properties and uh, thinking that's all you're going to do. It's 90% about people. So you've got to really want to get on with people, be a great problem solver and a hard worker. The hours are tough. It's a roller coaster ride of a good day and a bad day. Um, so yeah, really work out if that is what you really want to do. If you do, then um, give me a call. I'll happily chat through anybody who wants to do a career in a state agency and tell you more. I had no estate agency background when I set up Madison's. Um, what is the highest value property you have sold? That was a house over in Plaxtall called Allen's House. I'm sorry, I had to actually think for that one for a bit. Three and a quarter million. Um, yeah, that was a big value one. I've, I've not done many up at that level since. I, the, mo the highest value I sort of do tips around two, me two million normally at the moment um, in Tunbridge Wells. My colleagues on the high street, you know the two I'm talking about, they tend to get the really high value ones, which is fine. I'm fine at a high value, but yeah, I don't see that many. That's the highest one I've ever done. It was beautiful, lovely views. Um, have you had any embarrassing viewings? Yes. Yes, there was one that I did where I opened the door and I could hear someone singing in the shower and Mr. had forgotten that there was a viewing and he was taking a shower. Um, and oh, this, the viewers were early, so they were waiting for me on the doorsteps. So I couldn't even kind of call up to him and go, Cooey, I'm here, can you get yourself dressed? Um, I had one where the messages that we got through that the viewings were going to happen hadn't got to them and the house was an absolute car crash i spent two hours when i had a break in viewings we we're doing an open day there cleaning it and um i had another one where there was a son asleep in bed not alone and i don't actually know if he was asleep it's awful uh what's a typical day look like um well typically i will be in the office before eight um, I work most evenings, that's depressing and nothing to be proud of, but it's true. So uh, I often uh, have cleared through my emails the night before. So the morning I come in, it's a nice quiet time for me to get stuff done. Um, and then I run my team meeting at nine o'clock. Uh, that runs every morning till about half nine. Um, then the phones come on. Uh, I can then have a mixture in the day of valuations, I don't often do viewings anymore. I love doing viewings, but I just don't often do them anymore. If I've got a property that's not selling, I might do some uh, review meetings um, and quite a lot of sales progression chat with my lovely sales progression girls, so deals that haven't got through. Um, normally pick up my kids at half five or my youngest. My other two are, are, are off, basically. Um, and then, yeah, after dinner, I start working again. That's really depressing, isn't it? Um, are there any houses you find sell well? Yeah, I mean, basically, good school catchment, off-road parking, garden, accommodation that works. You know, if you're selling a family house, um, sorry, my friend just went running past. Uh, if you're selling a good family house, it's got to have like the open ki plan kitchen diner. So if it's a real box ticker of a house, but also then appeals to the heart a bit. So nicely decorated, well styled, exactly what kind of young, trendy London buyer families coming to the town and looking for. They sell all day long, all day long. Um, what's the worst property you've ever had to try and sell? Well, that's not fair to say it's the worst property because it's probably one of my favorite properties, but it took a long time to sell. A beautiful property at just outside um, Stonegate had the most magnificent views of any property I've ever sold, stunning. And um, basically because of that, it attracted endless viewers. Now, the sellers of that one were very particular. I did all the viewings because I knew the property so well. 
And that just make that's tough actually in a state agency. Sometimes you need a new perspective to come in and someone to you if you keep doing viewings and you don't get any offers, that becomes what you think is always gonna happen. So that wasn't the right thing to happen on this one. It took me two and a bit years to sell that one. I think I worked out when I got paid that my hourly rate was like five pounds sixty one an hour. Oh anyway. I was back on the market again recently, actually, and normally I get a little bit kind of like, oh, that's a shame those um, buyers didn't contact me to resell their property. You know, we do, like, think we do a really good job and keep in contact with them. That one, I was very relieved. That's all I'm saying. Um, I see you are in the middle of a house build. Um, what made you decide to do this? Uh, this is going to sound terrible. I go into so many houses, I guess. And I have, before I set up Madison's, I was always renovating property. And there's always something that's not quite right to me, that just doesn't quite work. So the only way I was ever going to get around that was design my own house and make it absolutely perfect. I'm not, you know, I'm not kind of into all the, the detail of like, oh, design my dream bathroom and kitchen. For more, it's like for me how the, the functionality of the house actually works and flows. The, what tile you pick is like 2% really of the job so um that it wasn't that that a pitch attracted to me it was the kind of thought of making it completely my own that um made me want to do it um is it as stressful as it looks on grand designs oh my yes like horrific um it wasn't for me i had a had a really wonderful project manager bear my soul a bit here uh who was my safe counsel at all times but he fell out with my builder they decided they couldn't work together so since he's left, it's just horrible, <laughs> so horrible. Get better. Um, I like challenge, I like to learn things that are new, I like to kind of stretch myself. So I'm kind of hoping, you know, I get a problem, I learn fast, so I'll find a way around it. But it's probably not helped that it's come when I'm a woman of a certain age, and trust me, that the crushing anxiety that you, any woman of around the age of 50 will know. Uh, so yeah, in the sense of overwhelm, so that's probably not been good. And of course I have a busy business, so if I could just give my time to one of them, I'd be fine, but it's the combination at the moment that makes it very, very stressful. And I just don't know what I'm talking about most of the time. And people think I do, so that's terrifying. Um, what's the best day you've had in this as an estate agent? Oh, you, I mean, it would, have to, it would definitely have to be going back to when I went my very first pitch, actually, so 10 years ago when I got recommended to a friend and I went around. I'd never, ever been an estate agent. I'd never practiced. I went around, I pitched, and I got the job, and it felt great. I thought, I can do this. Um, are you friends with other local estate agents? Yes, yes, definitely. Not all of them. Local estate agents out there often gets back to me what you might say about us. So, you know, be careful. Selling someone's house is like a short, intense friendship. They tell you everything. So, you know, small town goes around. But yes, definitely. Um, Carol Pryor of Firefly Properties over in Paddock Wood is a really good mate of mine, uh, like my mentor, really. Um, Natalie, who runs Belvoir Lettings, she's uh, really good. Um, another Deborah at Hamptons, we get on really well, like it when we're in a chain together. Um, so, yeah, and we have a general respect for each other, actually. I think they probably didn't for me at first because I was a new girl, but now they do. And I think anyone would say that we're a good agent, so... We get on all right. What is the number one way to add value to a home? Uh, open plan kitchen diner. Uh, what is the biggest thing to avoid when purchasing a home? Do you know, there's not one thing to avoid. I mean, um, subsidence is never great. Uh, historic asbestos still there is never great. Uh, all the other things, um, like a busy road or a north facing garden or too many bedrooms and not enough living space, it's just you've got to make sure that what you pay for it reflects that because you're, you will always find another buyer who will, but they equally will want a, a compromise on the price to reflect that compromise. So, yeah, um, but a really busy road is probably the toughest to get round. Are there any up and coming areas in Tunbridge Wells that will most likely rise in value faster than other? I don't know that there are actually. I mean, I think... The reality is probably Camden Road, probably five years ago, was a really good area to live around because Camden Road, I think, has got a great identity now. But of all the other areas, it's just a question of sort of affordability, really. So, you, you know, you could get a great house on the Showfields estate, 
1960s. I love 1960s. Um, but, you know, a lot of, lot of value for your money. I'm not sure it's necessarily going to grow any quicker, but it's just probably a good value pr price point. High Brooms is what it is, really great for commuters, great for getting to the A21, but not the prettiest of areas. So you can still get good value there, but I'm not sure there's any particular up and coming areas, um, particularly. I love Rust Hall though, actually. Tip for you, fabulous place to live. Um, what's your favorite area in Tunbridge Wells? Well, I have just said Rust Hall. I do love Rust Hall, rented there for a while, thought it was brilliant. Um, but for me, it's got to be the village and the south side of the town because that's just where I've always lived. So I know it like the back of my hand. Got lots of friends around here. It's green, it's beautiful, all of that. Any areas to avoid? No, actually. I mean, we live in a really expensive town. Probably haven't got the luxury to have a huge budget. So just, yeah, you know, buy where you can afford it. It's all lovely around here. There's nothing that bad. How often do you look on right move? Never, genuinely. Oh, sorry, that's the lie. Of course, in my job. That sounded awful. In my job and the day-to-day, -day, all day long, I'm on it. But never in the evening. Never. I, no way. I'm, oh, I'm, what I mean is never for pleasure. That's the best way to say it, isn't it? I'm over that. Oh my God, I just, what I do all day long, please don't make me look at right move in the evening. And yeah, and don't, please, if I go to your house and like a social thing, please don't ask me to go upstairs and see your bedrooms and give you an off the record valuation. That's work to me. I'm not relaxing then. Just word for the wise there. How would, what would you say to someone considering moving to Tunbridge Wells? Do it, it's great. Schools, green spaces, shops, amenities, parks. Love it, do it, architecture beautiful. Do you have a favourite house in Tunbridge Wells? Um, yes, but you can't see it from the road, so there's no point in me talking about it. I valued it. It's stunning. Stunning views, stunning outlook. Stunning. Um, do you think you're... Oh, actually, a oh, second one there, so I've got to add. If, he, if he's watching the Ice House or the Glass House on Neville Park, the Hoof House. Mm. Beautiful. Um, do you think you'll move house again in the future? Never, when I finish my build. Um, do you think property is a good for investment? Yes, absolutely. Um, bought my lovely house on Warwick Park, renovated it, sold it for more than double, you know, and it was quite expensive to begin with. Uh, got some rental properties, they give a really nice income and growth. So yeah, what am I not going to say? In fact, I used to work in banking and I used to struggle because I wanted to say to people, don't invest in hedge funds, put your money in property. And that wasn't what my boss wanted me to say. Um, what's your biggest perk of the job? I mean, my God, getting to do what I love every day, go and meet people, see their houses, problem solve, make a dream become a reality, let them move on with what they want to do. I mean, what, that's great, I think, it has value. And the biggest negative um, for me would be the, just the ups and downs of the job, really. You can be having a really great day and it can become a really bad day on one phone call. And... I think what's, what's worse is sometimes buyers or sellers have no idea the impact of what they're saying to you. They've pulled out on a deal and they don't realise you've now got to make a raft of really horrible conversations to break people's hearts and you've just done a load of work for nothing. So that can be quite depressing. But overall, I love it. I wouldn't do anything else. I hope that was of interest. Any more questions, we'll do another one of this in the future.